Hello YouTube, Alan back with part 3 of my Nintendo DS collection. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, click on the links in the description or somewhere around here. I'll sort something out. But anyway, onwards. Let me see, what are we up to? We're up to H. So first up is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part 2. Haven't played it, can't say much about it, but it's all complete. Um, I've actually played two Harry Potter games in total. One, one of the Lego Harry Potter ones, and I think it was The Order of the Phoenix on the Wii, because I thought, well, maybe they make use of the Wii mode at the time. So, not high on my priority, but it's it's a Harry Potter, I like the Harry Potter franchise, so I will give it a go at some point. Next is a franchise I do enjoy, and it's Harvest Moon DS. Very much um, a time sink game, because it, it, it's like, tired of working in real life, why not work in your game? And yet it can be surprisingly addictive. I suppose these days people be more familiar with this type of game, you know, the farm simulation through Farmville on Facebook and whatnot, but uh, this has kind of been there since the late 90s on the SNES. I've played many entries in the series and enjoyed them all. The DS is good, but to be honest, I probably prefer the GBA um, Friends of Mineral Town. Uh, there's also a billion versions, like there seems to be loads of Harvest Moon DS games. This was the first one to come out. And I didn't really, you know, I think for me, one is enough <laughs> on a system and that and that's it. You have to be really, really into them to buy it, to buy many. But it's good if you like that sort of thing. Uh, next we have Hotel Dusk Room 215. And I, I have to say, I really enjoy this. This is almost like a graphic adventure game with a few puzzles thrown in. You play um, Kyle Hyde, and it has this, I don't know, I won't see on the camera, but it actually makes more sense from the front, really. This real kind of graphic novel, you know, animation style, it's very unique. It, it's almost like it's, um, actually the best thing to think of is the, the Take On Me video by AHA, that's how it's animated. And it works surprisingly well, and, you know, a completely different um, uh, type of presentation than you're used to in, in, a, in a video game. So it makes it very interesting. Again, it's one of those Rumble Pack compatible games. I actually, I don't know, I've never used the Rumble Pack really, so I don't know what it does, but if you enjoy adventure games at all, this is well worth it. It's really story driven. You have to want to, to read, almost read a story with a little bit of exploration. There isn't too much in the way of puzzles, but there are one or two puzzles that make some real clever use of of the uh, the touch screen and the system uh, features in general a bit like another code a game I don't have but it was kind of like a it's not really not in the same series but by the same company thing uh, who've unfortunately gone uh, bankrupt I believe they make there's one puzzle in particular spoiler alert I guess where it actually makes you press the touch screen in two places uh, kind of like as if it's got multi-touch it doesn't but it's a very clever uh, way of, of, of making a multi-touch. Um, next up is a game that I, only, I picked up quite recently, actually. I got it in Player One Gaming in Minute, and that's Inazuma 11. Um, this is by Level 5, and I haven't got a chance to play it yet, but the Level 5, <laughs> you know, on the box, tells me it's probably going to be pretty damn good, because most games that they seem to produce are quality. Uh, I could, it's some, it's, it says, become a football legend, recruit and train a team from over 100 players to become the ultimate football champion. I have, a, uh, from what I understand, it's almost like a football RPG. As crazy as that sounds, it's meant to be really good. And I picked this up for something like three quid, so, you know, I couldn't say no at that price. Actually, I have the receipt in here. What was it? It was 3.99, so I couldn't say no at that price. So this has been a very popular series and there's loads more entries, so I'm, I, to be honest, I don't know much about them. I don't even know if this is the first in the series or, or what. You know, leave a comment below, maybe you can fill me in on what it is. Um, next is a game that I picked up, kind of based on title alone, and that's Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. It's Indiana Jones, so, you know, it's kind of got a franchise that makes me curious, and yet at the same stage... Perhaps one that I should be a little cautious about. Uh, Indiana Jones games have a very mixed history. But at the same stage, the character, you know, draws me in. I, always, I enjoy the movies and 
it's kind of like it seems that it should make a great game you know this adventure hero of course it's it's going to be you know all action that you know that should translate brilliantly to a video game um and i ha haven't got around to play this i got this i got this again somewhat recently i'm just trying to read the back it says immersive controls let you fight using nintendo ds stylus gestures Ooh, that sounds a bit dangerous mm. block puzzles and whatnot now i'd be curious to, to try it out anyway I don't know. I know that the Wii version of this game, or of the, the same title, uh, I think it has a port of one of LucasArts' old text adventure games. Now, I don't know if this version has it too. It'd be pretty cool if it does, because I, I think it was The Fate of Atlantis. Uh, it was meant to be a pretty good game. So, ha, a game I got for something like two, two pounds as well, but years to come out over here, it's Jam at the Band. This was released in Europe in 2010, and I think it was one of the launch games on the DS, or near launch in Japan, uh, or at least the, ver the first version, this might be the sequel. It, to be honest, I don't really, it doesn't really do it for me. There's a part, there's 100 songs available, and then they say 50 on the card and 50 that you can download. So basically there's 50 available because Nintendo Wi-Fi's gone. But it's supposed to be a case where you have up to eight people and you're all playing an instrument, so you're all basically a band. Uh, I don't know. I the, the sound quality ain't that great. And I just... The actual mechanic for playing, where it was the button presses, didn't seem that responsive or engaging. I was quite disappointed with this, to be honest. I wouldn't really recommend it. Unless you're really into your, your music games and whatnot. Now maybe I'm missing something. Because people do say that's good. I just... I don't know. It just doesn't click with me. Another game bought on Reputation. But again bought for a good price. I mentioned in part 2 I think it was. Where I got a bit, basically a bunch of RPGs at a really good price. And this was in them. And that's Kingdom Hearts... What the hell is it? 358 divided by 2 days. Obviously. What, what a catchy title. You know, uh, I think this is complete. Well, most of these games are complete. So, I do enjoy the concept of Kingdom Hearts. And I have Kingdom Hearts 1 on the PlayStation 2. And I think I've played a little bit of 2 as well. I just like the mixture of the Square and the Disney stuff. And, you know, it, it kind of works. And yet, at the same stage, it's one of those games that requires a lot of investment. So if I ever do get around to playing more RPGs, this will be another one that I'll definitely want to, to try out because of the mixture of the Disney properties. To be honest, I don't know how well the game translated to DS. Now this game I do know a fair bit about, and that's Kirby Power Paintbush, or as it was known in the US, Canvas Curse. I think it was Touch Kirby in Japan. Basically, it's this prequel to the Wii U game Kirby and the Rainbow Curse or something? I don't know. It's coming out 2015. It's, it's already out in America, actually. It's coming out in a few months, I think, in Europe. The Wii U game looks great. Claymation and whatnot. But this was the prequel. And it was, again, it was an early DS game. What did I say? 2005, 2006, something like that. All controlled using the stylus. And kind of Kirby's copying ability is, is played down a little bit. So you kind of Ooh, maybe that's not great, but no, I found this was a really great example of again how you can do a touch based game. It didn't, I suppose, Kirby games have often experimented, so it didn't really feel like you were shoehorning Kirby in, which I'll touch upon with some other series later on. And I just really enjoyed this, uh, it was a good, fun challenge. And you know, Kirby seemed really suited to the concept. I mean, all you do is basically draw lines, and Kirby follows the lines, you tap Kirby out to dash him. So it's, it's all about the physics momentum of Kirby on these lines. A good, good fun though. I definitely recommend it if you've got an ES. Um, but following up then to uh, Hotel Dusk, we have its sequel, Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Uh, I only got this relatively, well not that recently now actually, probably this time last year thinking about it, because uh, I completed it on Ninja Bear Hooks 52 game challenge. I, again, I really like this. If you like Total Dusk, exact same comments apply. It's um, it's really, really good. It's the type of uh, 
follow on I was hoping for after playing the first game. So, as I said, you know, same comments apply. Very story heavy. In fact, more story heavy, I think, than the first one. But anyway, let me see. How many have we got through? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll do one more and then we'll call it a part. We'll do two more because they actually fall into the same bracket. So we have The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks and The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. The first one of these was Phantom Hourglass. Ooh. Now, I'm a big Zelda fan. Really, really enjoy Zelda. But I did not really enjoy this game, to be honest. I mean, technically, it's fairly good. Like, it does a reasonable job of doing a 3 ds game. It's it's still isometric. It's an isometric. It's or three quarter view, so it's not full 3D. You know, like Ocarina of Time, but it's 3D rendered, and it's entirely stylus driven, which I think is to the detriment of the game. I don't really feel in control of Link, and. I feel when his name is Link, you're meant to be linked to the action, and it kind of feels weird. It feels like a disconnect. It also has some horrific design flaws in terms of just game mechanics. The, the most prominent being the fact that you have to constantly keep replaying the same central dungeon over and over again. And it's, it's not even fun, it's all this stealth stuff. Uh, the sailing is okay, but it's because it's all basically draw a line and go here, it feels it doesn't feel like you're exploring that much. It has, like, the, the, the unfortunate thing is there are some good ideas in there. Being able to, like, draw your path for your, 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 your bow, being able to blow, you know, uh, blow out fire and things like that. Being able to uh, draw notes on your map. They're good ideas. But it just, the execution isn't there for me. By and large, I also feel the same applies to its sequel, uh, Spirit Tracks. And this time, Link has traded in his boat for a train, and you're still kind of with the same mechanic, all stylus controlled, all the time, still feels disconnected. They have actually improved a few things. For whatever reason, I feel that the world feels a little more engaging, even though, again, you're just on train line, so you can't really explore as you would in a traditional Zelda game. But the, the 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 central kind of dungeon that you are revisiting in, in in Phantom Hourglass, they do have a central dungeon, but you only when well, you revisit it, go to the next level. So you kind of skip the previous levels that you've already done, or you can you can go back to them if you want, but you can skip them. So that's a big improvement. Um, funnily enough, I actually I think I'm at the last boss in this game and just didn't finish. I got so bored. This one, I probably would have finished it. But because of the control methodology and holding with the stylus, I found my hand kept cramping. And in the end, I put it down and just after maybe nearly 20 hours, and I'm, I must have been getting fairly far into it, and I was trying to collect as much of the side quests as well. But, but just the, the, the cramping made me put it away. This is the better game, to be honest, in my opinion. I, if you're going to pick one, and you want to try this, the DS Zelda games, because Nintendo and Zelda go, go hand in hand for quality, I'd start with this one. But to be honest... Both of these are fairly low down the Zelda list in my book. So, on that bombshell, we'll, we'll leave it for part 3. Join me back in part 4 where we'll see what is better than Zelda.